I'll see if some people are going to jump on and then I'll make sure my volume is okay. I can never tell these days. Let's have a look. Well, there's a video here somewhere. I know there is. Here we go. Okay, let's have a look at the volume. Yep, volume looks good. A couple of people jumping on. That's great as well. Oh, I haven't got my cards here to show you. It's a bit slack. Just looking at a blank desk. Okay, so I'm going to pop um, a couple of cards together today. Here are the first two. Um, as mentioned in the little event on my Facebook page, I basically found myself in need of some thinking of you and uh, cards um, for my own personal use. And uh, since it's uh, I don't get that long in the craft room, I basically decided to make them this week's project um, to show to you all. So. Uh, yeah, a few jumping on. Morning, Barb. And uh, morning from my friends in Canberra. I think that's actually, um, let me look at the look at the comments. I think that's Miss Vicky comes up with um, as Facebook user. So if that was you, Vicky, that said it was cold, Canberra, I think that was you. A little bit behind on the on the comments. But anyway, nice to see you guys as well. Uh, yeah, so these are the two cards I'm going to make for you. And then there's a third one that I'm going to pop together as well. We haven't actually um, got an example of that one. I'm just sort of playing it by ear and some things that I saw on Pinterest that um, that, I'm, um, that I've am that i sort of st borrowed from. I was going to say stolen from, but that's not the thing. Everyone pops things out there um, to inspire each other, which is wonderful. Anyway, so, yeah, a bit of a, a confession to make um, before I actually start or I can start at the same time. Putting these cards together, I, I think I'd forgotten that I love being a card maker first and foremost. I, I think in my brain I'd actually just was thinking of it as a business and I'd forgotten the joy of card making. So when I was designing these cards, I was trying to be really clever. You know, how can I show everyone how clever I am? You know, I might not have thought that, but that was the result. And I thought to myself, no, that's not what cards making is about. And that's why it shouldn't be about. It should be about the joy of sharing something beautiful with someone who needs um, who needs a, a lift up. So yeah, so I've decided I'm going to buy some kits that I saw in the catalogue that I love just for me and I'm going to use them and I'm going to have joy in them and I'm going to forget whether they make a good class or whether they make a good video and uh, I'm going to try and get that joy back. So if any of you are you know, business builders in um, in stamping up and you'd f you sort of lost touch of that that joy of card making, I'm definitely hearing you over the last couple of weeks. Okay, so we might as well start with this one. That's, I've bared my soul to you all this morning. We'll start with this one. Really lovely card. As I say, I really do love this um, Abigail Rose. It's just absolutely um, gorgeous uh, with this, this bloom. And I've tried to keep, because these are thinking of you cards, I've tried to keep them all sort of soft colours, nothing too Nothing too vibrant, nothing too in your face sort of thing. So anyway, if you're new or you haven't done so so far, my youngest has reminded me that every time I come on, I should ask everyone to like and subscribe. Apparently that's what all the big YouTubers do. They start their videos with please like and subscribe. So that's what Sammy told me I should say at the beginning of every video. I am trying to get to 5,000 subscribers, which would be a real buzz. Um, but if you haven't already, please like and subscribe my to my page, to my um, channel. Okay, so let's start with this one here. Again, our Abigail Rose, and I'm using my blends to give it a hint of colour. And a very interesting technique with the background there. You can see it's sort of got some white tinge to it. But I'll show you how I've done that as well. So I'm using Crumb Cake as the main colour um, for all these, yeah, in most of these cards. This is a, a normal size card base for me, um, eight and a, a four and an eighth by five and a half, but it's actually a portrait card. So you can see it's actually long and skinny rather than um, the other way around. Um, so it's actually 11 inches long, 11 inches long and four and an eighth wide and scored in the middle. So we get a sort of a... a um, a portrait card and I've got another piece of um, crumb cake 
It's just like me. I always say cr cake crumb, but crumb cake. Um, and I've popped this one through the um, painted textures embossing folder. So it's all I've done. I've just popped that straight through the embossing folder. And that's going to get some treatment to it and uh, and be popped on next. I've got two pieces of the wonderful Abigail Rose designer series paper. This one's got some uh, petal pink stripes on it. And this one looks like a bit of a ledger from an old um, accountings book. So they are both um, three by four inches. And I've got a little sentiment box again in crumb cake. And I have one of the Abigail Rose the main image out of the stamp set. I'll just show you the stamp set if you haven't seen it. Here's the stamp set here. It's got some wonderful sentiments and nice general ones, best wishes. It can be for anything. And then there's birthday and friendship ones as well. But I'm using this larger um, image there. And this one, I've stamped it on white cardstock, but I've actually used my early espresso ink. So it gives it more of that antique -y sort of. Um, antique sort of thing there we go cool so let's get pop this one together I'll just show you the um, how I'm going to give that effect on that already embossed um, oh something's going to crash bang down there it's my garbage bin I'm just moving my garbage bin so I'll get to my inks now I have a feeling that somebody who's very very special to me and her oh whole group of people who are very very special to me uh, have been doing something like this very similar in their classes so if this looks familiar, um, you can tell I've been inspired by, by you all. So I've got my white sort of pigment ink here. I don't use it very often. It's a pigment white um, stamp pad. In fact, it's not even the stamping up one, but it's, it's you know, much the same. I'm just going to grab it like that. I'm going to get a scrap of something to put under my scrap of something to put on, over my thingy. I don't get, forgive the colour, it's a bit bright, but you'll definitely see what I'm doing. Okay, and now that that's already been embossed, it's got some nice grooves and and um, pits and and valleys on in it. So I'm just grabbing my stamp pad on the white and I'm just basically rubbing it over. And as you rub it over, obviously the bits, the, um, the mountains, the higher bits um, attract the ink and the valleys or the lower bits do not so you just get sort of almost like a what would it be almost like a marbled finish something like that and the more you press down the more you add and so you can add some more color or in this case white but the um, obviously if you just brush over the top then you end up with just this really lovely sort of effect there Anyway, I'll pop that away. My pigment ink is quite, makes the, the cardstock quite damp. Quite, um, it quite adds a bit of, whereas normal ink sort of dries pretty much straight away. This one is quite damp. So I'm going to have to pop that aside for a wee minute to dry before we bring it back. Okay, so what we might do now is get our cute little flower, a beautiful little flower. And I'll show you the colours that I'm going to do um to use as i say not much color i'm going to keep it very pale and very um sort of sub subtle in my coloring not like me i know i've got my light mint macaron and i'm just going to pop that into the leaves and i'm not really even going to go like too crazy about going right up to the edges i'm just going to give it just like a hint of colour. And you really will just, as I say, it is just really just a slight colour because it even dries lighter than it actually goes on. Then I'm going to use my light and my dark petal pink, and it's really quite a Quite a misnomer calling them light and dark because they are actually very similar and they are both very light. It's not much to the petal pink um, deepness, darkness wise goes. This is the dark and I'm just popping it. I'm just being guided by the stamp itself. It's obviously got some, some darkening 
in the design. So I'm just basically popping the dark petal pink where the stamp tells me to. And then I bring in my light, which is very light, and blend that in. There we are. I'll bring that in so you can see. As I say, just a hint of colour, but it really deepens it, makes it look quite lovely. Now I'm going to bring in my, my light, and I'm just going to, going to, gonna, I'm going to just blend that in. And again, I might not even just take it right to the edge. I might just let it peter out to sort of nothingness at the very edge of the leaf. Okay, as I said, again, this, this is image that's been stamped originally in early espresso. There we are. So isn't that glorious? That's just lovely. Anyway, yeah, you do get so excited by the new stuff that comes. You know, we get our Christmas stuff coming in July. We get, um, yeah, so you, you forget what your favourites are from the original. And this is definitely one of my favourites from the annual catalogue. Okay, so I think that's dry enough for me to start fondling, so I will. I'm just going to grab my glue. This glue has um, lasted me forever. It's so weird, you know. Um, I keep thinking to myself, I better swap it out, but it keeps delivering. I think it's one of those, I don't know, any Australians of my age might remember the series of ads they had for a, a chocolate biscuit, or might be, I might have spoken too soon our chocolate biscuit Tim Tams and it's going to prove me wrong, isn't it? And um, there's a genie that makes the woman, he appears to the lady and she says, and he says, you can have anything you want. And she says, it's an, like a never ending packet of Tim Tams. So I think this is my never ending glue, although it's probably just proving me wrong. Or maybe I've just got better at using not very much. Okay, so I'm going to pop that just straight onto, and I'm checking that I didn't have to put a ribbon on it. No. Now the next card, the one with the designer series paper, I do need to put the ribbon on before I attach anything. So I've told you all to put me on notice that I actually put this ribbon <laughs> on. Well, the trouble is with the delay on the video, I can already have made the mistake by the time you guys will be able to tell me. So anyway, so we've got that there on our card. Now I'm going to bring in our couple of pieces of designer series paper. As I say, we've got the petal pink stripe one and the one that looks like a, a lined ledger. I'm going to pop the, the, the lined one on first and just at a bit of an angle, um, just like that. And I'm going to pop it up on some dimensionals just to be a wee bit different to normal. I'm going to actually pop this piece of designer series paper on dimensionals. I think that will make it easier. Well, it sort of stands up from the really pretty background a bit better and makes a statement of its own. That makes sense. more of the little backings I just swept up under my desk just before I came on and I swear so many little backing pieces I think if archaeologists ever dig up my house they will wonder what in heaven's name I would was getting up to because there's just so much so many of these little <laughs> these little um, dimensional backings I wonder maybe if whether I had some strange religion or something. Okay, so I'm going to bring in the, the the lined one and I'm going to pop that on and I would normally make it straight, but I don't think it quite shows enough of the pink. So I'm going to put that at a little bit of an angle facing back the other direction just to confuse myself later when I try and line things up. So I'll just pop some glue on the back of that and pop that on straight on 
to the pink one. And again, slightly leaning the other way. Let me just make sure I stay up with my comments. Fair few of people on today. Thanks for joining me, guys. Remember, um, remember, <laughs> Deb says that uh, dimensional beings breed. I'm sure they do, Deb. It's like, um, what is it that sort of you put one coat hanger in a cupboard and then supposedly it, you open the cupboard and there's 20 of them as they've, they've bred in the night? Though I've never found that. I'm always looking for coat hangers. So if anyone has one of those famous breeding coat hangers, please let me know. So I really, really would like to get hold of one. But uh, yes, they say coat hangers breed as well. But these things definitely, definitely, there's some sort of sort of funky breeding program going on while my, while my back is turned. Okay, so we're going to bring in our pretty, pretty flower now. And I'm just going to pop that straight on the top of that um, uh, striped panel. Um, I could dimension that as well, but I really don't think it does because it's already sitting up nice and high um, with the, uh, the, the paper on dimensionals. So I'm just going to pop that straight there like that. And I'm trying to get it at the same sort of angle that I had it on my original card. There we are. As I say, it sort of gives that lovely sort of craft, sort of like craft notebook look. I really love that. And I think that's what adds to it with the lined paper as well. It sort of gets that sort of craft notebook look. Okay, try saying that a few times fast. Okay, so again, I have a little stitched rectangle from the stitched rectangle dies, and that's also in the crumb cake. I've got the Thinking of You sentiment, and it is from... One of my favourites for sentiments anyway, the Quiet Meadow stamp set. I mean, many of them have a thinking of you sentiment, but this is one of my favourites. I do love the flowers in this one as well. So that's where I go to for my normal thinking of you sentiment. I'm going to stamp my sentiment in my early espresso, as I did with my the image of my flower. And if I can just bring it down a wee bit so I can get over the top of it, forgive me for a second. Hopefully you won't see the top of my head. I think it's been 12 months since I had colour put through my hair. So I'm trying to grow it out and accept my inner grey. So, But when I see it on videos, it is quite, <laughs> quite a shock. You sort of look at yourself in the mirror, you don't really look, you know. Sometimes you sort of flash past the the mirror and don't really look, but then you see it in videos and you think, oh, my goodness, I am so grey. So I don't think I'd seen my actual hair colour for probably 20 years up till then. But retired me decided to embrace my grey, although I have had, I have had some um, little foils, some little streaks pop through just when it was a, a little bit alarming. Okay, so here we go. Um, so this little sentiment, I am going to put it on two dimensionals. But before I do so, I'm going to cut, um, just tie myself a little double bow with the twine. This is just the linen, tw linen twine or baker's twine. Um, so I'm just going to double that over. I'm not going to do anything fancy with my fingers today. I'm just going to double it over and do a normal bow. Woohoo! First time. That's very unusual for me. Just do a little double bow. There we are. And then grab my scissors. Now, a lady during the week saw my Scotty Dog video where I, I think it was one of the Scotty Dog videos, it's been a few of them lately, um, and mentioned that she would like to grab hold of. Um, one of Jan Casey's wonderful storage containers that I'm absolutely loving. It is my favourite thing. You know, if I'm doing a project, I just put what I need for the project and I don't have to worry about um, searching around in my in my carousel. Uh, but if that lady, I can't remember who it was. I'm terrible. I'm sorry. If you are watching again, please pop over to my Facebook page and you'll see a link to Jan's Facebook page over there. And any of you who... Um, who like the look of that, please do so. Um, there's links to Jan's page from mine. 
If not, just send me a message and I'll give you the link. Okay, so I'm going to just grab my glue dots. And this is an absolute gem of a packet of glue dots. I've had packets of glue dots lately that would rather stick to anything but the project. And these are behaving themselves nicely. Hopefully they won't prove me wrong. But anyway, I've got my little bow there that I've made of my twine. Just going to grab a glue dot and pop it sort of, I'm just trying to time it, put it in the right, just down towards the bottom, sort of left hand side of our, of our image. And I'm going to pop that little bow just on it there. Then what I'm going to do is bring my sentiment in and just sort of, it's going to sit just slightly covering that bow so it looks like the bow's, well, the bow is up and under it a wee bit. So I'll pop some dimensionals on this sentiment and I can pop my embellishments on and then this one is done. Pop some. Now this is going to be tricky. I'm going to have to line it up so it's straight so that I'm not following necessarily the line of the designer series paper. I'm actually straight. That's going to be hopefully that's straight-ish. There we go. So there's that one. And um, Bo Gilmore, you're asking what brand they are. They're actually the stamping up. Um, glue dots, just the mini glue dots from Stamping Up. So if you've got a demonstrator or if you live in Australia and you'd like to buy from me, please, please follow the links and do so. Okay, so I'm going to use, I haven't used these for the longest time, I'm going to use the Champagne Rhinestone Gems for my bling in this case. And I'm just going to pop them around. So a nice big one there. And the middle size one. up here and a little one next to it and I will pop a, a white once I've written my little message to my dear friend who this is for I'll pop a white panel inside with that there we go there we go so that's there that's card number one well it's actually card number one and two, but there you go. So that's that one there. Okay, so that's the first one. So hopefully the friends who I'm making these for won't mind if they do see these videos, they won't mind that I've made a video of their cards, but you know, it sort of means you're famous. So that's gotta be a good thing. Okay, so this is card number two. Again, I'm using crumb cake as, as part of the, the um, part of the design. <clears throat> But it is actually a black card base. And um, yeah, I'm actually using the designer series paper just straight from the designer series paper pack. So it's very, very, very easy, this one. So here we have, again, I'm doing it as a portrait card. So I've got a long, skinny card base. So four and an eighth by 11 this time, scored at five and a half. There we are. I've got a panel of, again, crumb cake. And that's going to sit straight on there. I've also got another panel. Obviously, when I make these cards for friends, I go all out. I've got a, another layer of crumb cake and a layer of basic white that are going to pop on the inside there just to make that a wee bit more special. And this is the designer series paper. So this is just straight from the Abigail Rose designer series paper. It's got a lovely sort of pattern all over it. Fairly easy to fussy cut, which you'll see in a moment because I have fussy cut one. I hope I can find it. Where did you go, fussy cut? It's not there. I may have to fussy cut another one. Oh, you poor guys are going to have to watch me fussy cut. Where did it go? Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, oh, dear. Where did it go? Is it on the floor? No, it's not on the floor. It was there a minute ago. Anyway, we'll just keep moving on and I'm sure it'll appear. Hopefully it'll appear somewhere, but maybe not. 
Oh, well, I have to fussy cut another one if it doesn't show itself. Okay, so let's just keep making. So I'm going to layer up the inside first, she says. Oh, look, hoping that the fussy cut is stuck. There's one. I have fussy cut. It's really dark, this image today. I'm sorry about this. I've got all my lights on, um, but it is quite dark outside. So hopefully it's not too, the colours are okay where you are. Apologies. It's a bit hard to balance the um, outside light and the inside light at the moment. Could turn my inside lights up a wee bit. We'll try that. Or it could just be my computer. I don't know. Anyway, so I've got one layer of crumb cake. I'm going to pop just inside and another on top. With my never ending glue. She says, tempting fate, so it will just run out now, I know. There we go. Oh, maybe because I've been cutting so many kits lately and not actually crafting, which is probably why I've sort of lacking a bit on the inspiration, I think. As I say, I've been treating it very much like a, you know, what would make a good class, you know, what will make a good fun fold class and stuff like that, rather than just, just doing it for my own um, enjoyment. Got to get back to that. Okay, so this paper, I'm actually going to give that a wee bit of colour as well. Just the best thing about um, these beautiful penciled lines on these um, designer series paper. All the leaves, so all the leaves, I'm just going to colour them with that light mint macaron again. And again, just very lightly, not even really bothering, to, well, not bothering, but not going right to the edges. So this is just the leaves. And again, it's just going to give, just going to give, she says, trying to fix her English, going to give the paper just a tinge of colour, a hint of colour. Hubby's actually gone away for the weekend, so I'm a single woman. So I'll be able to spend some time in the craft room. Not that he worries too much. You know, he'd never say anything, but I do sort of feel when he's home for the weekends, I should probably spend some time with him, you know, that's part of the deal. But when he's away, the, what is it? The cat's away, the mice will, in this case, the mice will craft. And I think somebody near and dear suggested that we have a Zoom coffee at some stage. It sounds like a d goodness, an excellent idea. I was going to say a damn good idea, but that's a bit rude. Sounds like a wonderful idea so if we have a Zoom coffee at one stage. Okay, I think that's all the leaves. That's all I can see. One will probably jump out at me in a minute when I realise I've missed it. Again, we're just looking at a... Thanks, Barb. I won't. I've, I've got the ribbon in my mind here. I'll pop it on the middle of the desk so I don't forget it. So there's the green. And then I'm going to just bring in the light petal pink. I'm going to leave the big flowers plain, but just these little tiny flowers that are popping in off the edges. Just going to give them a hint of light petal pink. Just the hintest hint. So weird though. I've been really distracted at home of late because I've been um, doing a lot of estate stuff for mum this last week, lots of dealing with government departments and banks and things. And I think it's left me quite brain addled. And uh, Stephen reminded me, Steve's my hubby's name, if anyone doesn't know. Stephen reminded me during the week that he was going away this weekend. And he said um, this morning, 
last night I noticed he was packing clothes. I thought, oh, I had no memory, no memory of him telling me he was going away. And I actually said, where are you going? And, oh, he gave me such an eye roll. He said, I told you yesterday that I was going away for the weekend, going to Launceston for the weekend with the club. And I, I swear I have absolutely no, no recollection at all of him telling me. He reckons I was just sitting at my desk. I obviously was concentrating on some form or something that I had to do for mum. And I had no recollection at all. I'm going to say it was because I might, was busy elsewhere. My mind was busy elsewhere. Either that or I'm starting to lose it. Who knows? But he does mutter. Anyone who's met my husband knows that he mutters quite badly or quite mumbly. He actually lectures university, so I sometimes feel really sorry for his students who stands up the front of the class of these big lecture theatres mumbling like he does here at home. But, um, yeah, so maybe he mumbled it and I didn't. But he said I actually said yes. But I, as I say, I have no idea what I was actually saying yes to. I would probably a million miles away so there we are so that's the color on that that's just really subtle just quite light there well I think it's subtle subtle for me anyway I'm sure there are far more subtler people out there than me ribbon ribbon ta-da ribbon the ribbon's going to go around these two layers before I attach them to the card oh, quite pl quite proud of myself here that I remembered that thank you Barb going to pop it on the bottom say third so I'm going to bring in my double-sided tape make sure I put it on the right third pop it on there now this is the ribbon that comes with the Abigail Rose suite and I kept it out so I would remember what it was called I definitely kept it out so I would remember what it was called here it is it's called the natural finish ribbon lovely big spiel spiel of it there and it's quite it's like the best part of an inch wide it's really really lovely a bit hard to bow I am bow challenged at the rest of times you guys know that but it's quite I find it difficult to um, quite difficult to um, to bow it Jenny suggests so I put things like that in my planner well if I'd actually heard him I probably would have registered but I'm sure I think what is it called when somebody tries to make you doubt your own sanity and I don't mean I'm sure he's not doing it but I definitely have the feeling that I'm being what is it gaslitted because I'm sure he didn't tell me I'm absolutely positive no he probably did I'm just being mean okay so I'm going to add this ribbon and I've added it a wee bit high so I'll just bring it down a bit so it's probably just an inch or so, yeah, an inch or so from the bottom of the card. And I've wrapped it around while well, I'm wrapping it around. There we go. There we are. Ribbon remembered. Thank you, guys. There we go. Now I'm going to glue the rest of it on there. Yeah, I think just glue will be fine. Oh, dear. I think I'm going to go after morning, go into morning. I think my ever, oh, just gave a death rattle, I think. My never-ending glue just ended. I'll pop it in there upside down and I might get a bit more. Okay, so I'm going to pop this onto our card base that we've already prepared with the inside all done. And there we are. So that's that there. It's a bit hard with the black to see where I'm going. There we are. I have to say this is, this piece of black that you're looking at here and this piece here are officially the last pieces of black cardstock I have in the craft room. I'm waiting on an order which is taking forever to get here and it's got black cardstock in it but I've run myself out to the end because I had black, a black card in um, my latest class and uh, it used it all. So there you are. Goodbye my black cardstock. Black cardstock does not never ending I can tell you that right now so from this same paper I've just fussy cut one of the single blooms with some leaves attached now I tried and I haven't got them anymore here but I tried to match it with the stamp set I tried to stamp a an image but unfortunately well 
whatever it is, the cards the the de designer series paper is not quite white, and it's not quite very vanilla. It's somewhere in between. So if I used white, um, it was too bright, and if I used very vanilla, it was too dark. So I'm just going to turn my lights up a bit. So I have a feeling we're struggling here a bit. So I'm just turning my uh, the streaming lights up. So forgive me for a second. If you hear a crash, it means that something's crashed down, but I'm just turning them up. Try and get a bit more light on the situation. I don't know if that's made any difference. The camera often fixes the light anyway. So anyway, I've cut a piece. So the only thing I was happy to do, match it with was another piece of designer series paper. So that's exactly what I've done. I've just cut myself fussy cut myself um, an image and again I'm going to use my mint macaron just purely on the leaves just the same as we did on the card itself leaving the big bloom white there we are so this one I can pop I'm going to pop on there just so it sort of covers over the ribbon a wee bit and then I've got my sentiment box and this, these are my favourites at the moment this is the deckled rectangles absolutely wonderful the best card making tool that I've seen for the longest time they just add just something extra something special to your rectangle I don't know if you can even see that it's got like a beveled edge so maybe we'd call them beveled rectangles but honestly they are the best um, Oh, well at the moment I'm loving them anyway and I'm going to use for sentiment on this one you're on my mind so this is from nature's prints the best wishes from the actual stamp set would probably work as well but I just wanted to go a wee bit more specific uh, with with this particular card so you're on my mind the original one I've done in black but actually I might do this one in um, early espresso as well just because I like the look of that on that other one so we'll just do your on my mind and I know it is a bit of a it is a bit of a stretch with this one yep that's good just fits lengthways or crossways on the thing on the rectangle there we are you're on my mind so that is going to sit just to the right hand side of our flower and then our flower will sort of just nestle onto that a bit like that okay now I'm actually going to glue the sentiment or actually I'm going to double-sided tape it the reason I'm going to double-sided double-sided tape it is because it actually rests on the ribbon and I did find the glue didn't really uh, adhere to the ribbon very well so double-sided tapes better um, dimensionals would probably work too they're quite sticky these little backings of double-sided tape I think the um, archaeologists will also find a lot of those so they they will definitely be wondering what I've been up to in here so I'm going to pop that like half on the ribbon and half off and over to the right hand side there we are and then I'm going to bring in some more dimensionals and I'm going to pop that flower on some dimensionals. And then I've got one more to do, which I'd only just decided to do this morning, so I don't have an example of it, but I'm sure you'll love it too, just with this beautiful designer series paper. That's the big one. So I'm going to pop some just little bane of my existent mini dimensionals on those leaves. There we are. So keeping with my new resolution to um, craft for me over the next little while I'm actually going to buy some 
stamp sets that I didn't think I was going to buy because I love them for myself, but I didn't know how they'd go in classes and stuff. So I'm actually going to buy the the olive branch one, which I absolutely adore. And we have a little olive grove out the back. Well, we have five olive trees. I call it an olive grove. Um, anyway, and so I absolutely adore the trees. The trees are wonderful. So um, I'm going to buy that one and I'm going to buy the geraniums one as well, which I think is really nice. And I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy the, lots of goners today, aren't I? I'm going to also buy the, um, what was it? the wattle one which I adore so I'm buying them for me so I'll probably show you as well maybe you'll like them as well but yes I'm going to buy them and use them for myself and uh, hopefully I'll get some lovely ideas with them okay so these are the pearls just the plain pearl gems and I'm popping three of those on just to give this one a wee bit of bling as well. So there we are. So that's a oh, bit of focus issue. That's card number two. So there we are. So I've got four made so far. Hopefully that's going to focus for you. It could be my eyes. Is it just my eyes? It might just be my eyes. There we go. So that's two. So I've got four done so far. It's been, yeah, it's a horror, well, it's been a very difficult time in my little circle of friends. We've been lots of not really nice things happening. So, yes, I've never needed four thinking of you cards. I actually need five, five thinking of you cards in the period of a, of a month. Okay, so this last one I'm going to make, I, as I say, don't have one to show you, but I'm going to be using this. This is my last piece of this particular designer series paper. It's got beautiful tulips or crocuses and probably tulips, I'd say, but they're really lovely on a sort of a early espresso background there. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use, I have a piece of early espresso, which I'm going to back it with, and then a white card base, which I'll turn around because that hasn't, hasn't folded straight hate that just fold it straight and score it still not 100% just bear with me I'm going to cut that down just to even off those edges a bit there we are that's better I said this is a landscape card, so it's going to be a crossways like that. I'm going to, as I say, layer up this piece of glorious designer series paper. So the other side is the what the pink stripe that we used before. This is the simplest card. That's why I sort of just tacked it on the end. I wouldn't have done it if we didn't have a few minutes to spare. Oh, I'm going into morning. My never-ending glue is ending. I have to grab another one. Farewell, glue. You've been a good friend. Oh, I'll grab another one. Here we go. Sometimes like cutting blades, you know, sometimes you get a cutting blade and you put it on and it lasts like, seemingly lasts like two minutes and it's, you know, blunt. And you think to yourself, hang on. And then you get another one that lasts forever. And, um, yeah, you wonder what whether you're going a bit mad. So this layer is just going to go straight onto the white card base and you get that beautiful contrast of the white with the brown. Absolutely love this. There we are. As I say, the easiest card. So there we are. I'm not missing your comments on purpose, guys. I'm just a bit enthralled. So oh, I should give you some measurements. This is a um, normal size card base uh, and it's actually normal orientation as well so eight and a quarter by five and a half the panel of um, early espresso is half an inch smaller so it's going to be five and a quarter by uh, three and five eighths and then the paper is only an eighth of an inch smaller so you really just get that tiny little seam of um, early espresso I'm going to now grab my light and dark blends so I've got my dark blend I'm just going to pick one flower 
So I just want one flower that's sort of central but has a little bit of detail to it. These two would be okay, but then there's not much to them. I might use this one, just one flower with my real red blend. And I'm going, oh, this is the dark one. Again, as I mentioned with the other one, just you're led by the led by the um, stamp, by the, well, in this case the paper, as to where the shadows would be. And just put my dark there. I think the inside would be dark as well, so I'll just go with the dark in there as well. Okay, then I'm going to bring in my light. I hope this is my light, yep. And blend in the rest. So this is just a, a shock of colour, I suppose. And where the others were, I was aiming for subtlety. No such creature here. So I don't know whether I'll use this one for a get. Uh, don't know if I'll use this one for thinking of you. There we are. So we've just got one flower coloured, just to give it pop value. And then I have a um, well, half inch strip of basic white and half inch strip of real red. So I'll bring back my Thinking of You stamp. This time I will use black. Oh, if I can bring it with me. I'm going to stamp on the white. If I can line that up with the sticker, okay. Yep, that's fine. And I'm basically just going to pop the white layer just on top of the red one, but slightly off centre. So you can see, and I'll bring that up so you can see. So you see the, the red to the left-hand side and underneath. So it just peeks out there. So that's what I'm going to basically do there. And that's going to sit on the front of the card like that. So how's the best way to do this? I might glue them together first. Right. Mm, hang on. Just thinking ahead. As I say, I hadn't. I saw this card done, but I hadn't actually done it yet myself. So I'm just sort of working it out as I go. I might actually chop this off. So that's uh, say there. So that's what two and a quarter, and then the same length of red, two and a quarter. Yep, that's what I want. And I'll put some glue, new glue, just on the red. Now, the thing with new glue is it comes out so quick, so that's a bit of a problem. But anyway, got a bit too much glue there. So I'm just popping the white, as I mentioned, on top of the red, but offset. That's the word I was looking for, offset. Like that. Well, you can't see that there, just like that. And then I'll bring in some dimensionals again, pop it on some dimensionals. And pop it on the card just there. thought of bling 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 what bling will we use
Yeah. It's pretty effective for uh, just a one coloured image, isn't it? Um, bling, I think I'll grab my, what will I grab? Grab my, what, what, what? Pearls, no. No, maybe just iridescent gems if I can find them. Just forgive me, I'm just looking for my iridescent gems. There they are. There's some anyway. I might pop a couple of these on just for some bling. Don't need any of the redies bling. Yeah, Fran, I think you're actually right. I'm sort of regretting it getting those out, but now you've now you've suggested it, I can get away with it. Yes, you're exactly right. I don't think it needs bling. I think the, the red is pop enough. There we go. Thanks, Fran. You've saved me from it going too far yet again, which is my habit sometimes, isn't it? Okay, so there we are. That's my, well, five cards that I've, well, three that I've made with you, but five that I have all together. So I'll just show you the ones we've made, that one and that one and that one. Okay, so that's the cards we've made together today. So they're my thinking of you cards. Hopefully you like those. As I say, this is the Abigail Abigail Rose collection. So everything, I think everything you see here is the ribbon is from the Abigail Rose collection. The designer series paper is from it. I've used different sentiments, obviously. Um, the paper and the, yeah, so, yeah, the ribbon. Or the, yeah, most of it's from the Abigail Rose collection anyway. So there you go. So, yeah, if you'd like to know anything else about these products, please reach out. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, please like and subscribe so you can get notifications when I go live again. Um, pop over to my Facebook page if you'd like to see the details of anything that I've done over the last few months. And um, yeah, have a great weekend. Stay safe and I'll see you all again during the week. Okay, bye.